Hello Artificial and Facts viewers, welcome back to the channel. Today, we will discuss the topic of binomial distribution. Let's get right to it. To make things clear and organized, I'll be explaining this topic using the questioning method of 5W and 1H. The first W is what? So, what is binomial distribution? The answer can be found with a quick Google search, where it's explained, A binomial distribution can be thought of as simply the probability of success or a failure outcome in an experiment or survey that is repeated multiple times. That's pretty simple, don't you think? discuss that formula in the how section. Moving on. The who of binomial distribution is Jacob Bernoulli. Born January 6, 1655, Basel, Switzerland. He died August 16, 1705 at the age of 50 from chronic illness and had a logarithmic spiral and the motto, although changed, I rise again the same, engraved on his tombstone. He had been the first of the Bernoulli family of Swiss mathematicians. The where and when of the binomial distribution is Bernoulli's post hummus, meaning after death, work titled Ars Conjectandi or The Art of Conjecturing. It was published 1713 or eight years after he had passed. Now, you might be thinking, 1713? That was like 300 years ago. Why do we have to learn this ancient math formula now? If you're thinking so, then I have two points for you. First of all, it was actually 309 years ago. And second of all, binomial distribution is used in a variety of ways, such as to test whether or not a new drug can cure disease or the probability of someone winning the lottery. It's still used a lot in day-to-day -day life to determine success and failure. And that is the why of why we learn binomial distribution. Now, we understand binomial distribution theoretically. But what about in practice? This is where the how comes in. And also where this scary thing is used. So, how do we use binomial distribution? Generally, binomial distribution is explained through the flip of a coin. The coin in question would have one side of heads and the other would be of tails. An example question would be something like, find out the probability of getting five heads in five flips. The reason why it's explained that way is to obtain the probability of observing something successes in a certain number of trials. The Central Bureau of Statistics helps to show the basic statistics of current economies, social changes, and etc. On their website, it's shown how many visitors they have per year divided by months. Let's see if they get more visitors on January to June or from July to December. After adding the numbers of total visitors from January to June and July to December 
in the last five years, we get this. Now, we can observe from this table which half of the year had more total visitors. Through our observations, we can conclude that in 4 out of 5 years, the month July to December had more total visitors than January to June. This is where this formula comes in. Now don't be scared, it can smell fear. <laughs> Just kidding, although intimidating, the formula isn't as hard to do as it seems. Let's look at the two forms this formula takes. This form of binomial distribution has px equals n times c times x times p to the power of x and in brackets, 1 subtracted by p to the power of n subtracted by x. It's a mouthful to say and a headache to take in. So let me explain. In this form, the n, c, and x is actually just the commutation formula. The real formula we use to calculate binomial distribution is actually in its second form. In this form, each letter has a role. The n factorial is the starting count of a number of ways an event can occur. The n subtracted by x in brackets ends the count of numbers of ways an event can occur. The x factorial deletes duplications. The lowercase p to the power of x is the probability of success for x trials. The lowercase key, which can also be written as 1 subtracted by p in brackets to the power of n subtracted by x, is the probability of failure for the x trials. As what I've said can be hard to understand, here's a visual image that depicts exactly what I've said. Now that we understand the formula a little better, let's start the calculations. We'll be using this form of the formula. To solve our problem, we put in our data in the first part of the formula. PR for probability, X for the amount of successes, N for how many trials were performed, and P, the probability that the decision was made. In our case, the choice was either first to six or 7 to 12, which leaves it at a 50% chance that either one would be chosen. This is how the first part looks like. The next part of the equation boils down to the different orders that more people would have visited on the 7 to 12 month in 5 years. As we've already identified what each letter means, let's put in the numbers. Now with actual numbers to compute, it really doesn't look that bad. I hope you paid attention in 7th grade math class, because those exclamation points are factorials. If you didn't pay attention back then, here's a quick Google definition for you. Factorials in mathematics is the product of all positive integers less than or equal to a given positive integer and denoted by the integer and an exclamation point. Hope you got that because now we're doing the calculations. Five times four times three times two times one is 120. Four times three times two times one equals 24. 24 times one equals 24. 120 divided by 24 equals 5. 
or five ways that more people could have visited the site between the month of July to December. Not too hard, right? P to the power of X is the probability that month 7 to 12 was visited by more people 4 out of 5 times. So, it is written as 0 0.5 to the power of 4. While 1 subtracted by P to the power of N subtracted by X corresponds to someone that visited the site on the month 1 to 6. So, 1 subtracted by P is the probability that people visited on the first 6 months. And n subtracted by x is the amount of time more people visited the site on the first 6 months out of the 5 years. So the number that would be displayed inside would be 1 subtracted by 0 0.5 to the power of 5 subtracted by 4. We then proceed with the calculation. After doing all those calculations, all that's left now is to put the results from our calculations together. So it turns into 5 times 0 0.0625 times 0 0.5. And the results are 0 0.0625 times 0 0.0625. This is the probability that in 4 out of 5 years, there would be more visitors on the Central Bureau of Statistics website at the 7th to 12th month of the year. Now, you've learned about the nominal distributions. I hope my discussion and explanations in this video have helped you to understand the binomial distribution. And I thank you for your time and attention. If you enjoyed the video, leave it a like. And should you have any questions, feel free to comment them below and I'll do my best to answer it. That is all from me. Take care.